Join me today as we take a look at how I paint my very first 28mm tank, and it's a KV-2 from the new Actong Panzers range from Warlord Games. I set myself two challenges in this video. The first, to actually paint a 28mm tank, and the second, to do it without my trusty airbrush. I'm going to run you through how I use oils to compensate for not using my airbrush. I think the results really speak for themselves, but I'd love to know if you found this tutorial useful. This is the first of a few 28mm Russian tank painting tutorials, so if you've noticed a few steps have been missed in this video, don't stress, as I'll be covered in the next one. Today we are going to tackle my first 28mm vehicle. This is a KV-1, it's part of the Actung Panzers range, as well as Bolt Action from Warlord Games. The team at Warlord Games kindly sent me this, so a huge thank you goes out to them. Now, if you haven't been in the hype with Actung Panzers, it's a new 28mm tank warfare game that's just come out, and you can find all of their uh, new kits, as well as their rule books, etc., on the Warlord Games website under Actung Panzers. I'd really recommend checking it out there's some fantastic stuff on the website um, ranging from deals with different types of vehicles to crew some of them have some look some fantastic looking storage as well which is just amazing now if you are going to be purchasing anything from world of games i would really love for you guys to use my special link that i've got through world of games as part of their affiliate program by using this link, you can just use it how you would ordinarily use the Warlord Games website with all their specials and discounts, etc. It just means that whatever you purchase will help um, my YouTube channel uh, through Warlord Games. So link to that is in the video description and comment section. So once you get your kit, I've assembled it here, but with the KV-1 kit, and two, as you can tell, you get both options. You can do the KV-1 and the KV-2. The kit goes together really nicely. Very few parts, um, no small parts either, apart from the machine guns, which unfortunately actually lost the machine gun on the KV-1. Um, but that is the smallest part. And for 28 millimeter, that machine gun is not small. So it goes together really, really nicely. The tracks come in, I think it was two or three pieces. Um, and they just glue on really well. So it's a fantastic kit. The fact that they give you both options is a really, really nice choice. I mean, you'd expect it with a plastic kit, but I could imagine some companies would uh, prevent you from doing that just to get a little bit more revenue. Um, but Wall of Games haven't done that. I also find, and I do this with all my models, leaving the tracks off if you can um, really helps with the weathering stage later on. So you can have that option here. So you can glue those on later if you want to which is what I absolutely uh, will do. So overall, the kit is just brilliant, but we want to paint it. Now, I said I'm not going to be using an airbrush. I'm going to be using a Tamiya spray can, which is TS-91. It's dark green, which is Japanese green, but also I'm getting the same color uh, in a paint part version as well. Now once we've sprayed those colours, you'll see what they actually look like in a little bit. But the first thing I want to do before I really pay much attention to that is paint the track. So I use black grey for that. And you can see that I'm using a big brush now. I'm used to using small brushes. This is a 28mm vehicle. So it's uh, requiring me to use brushes I didn't think I'd be using for a while. Um, but today we're going to be looking at how I really try and make this spray paint pop. Because airbrushing you can modulate a lot easier opposed to like using dry brushes etc. So we're going to be using oils. And the oil that we're using today is part of the Ablong, Abtai Long 502 set. But before we use that we want to make sure we use a semi gloss varnish or a gloss varnish. That's just going to protect the paintwork underneath. And then we're going to use oil. And this oil is the engine grease and we're going to use an oil wash for this. So to do that, you want to use an old palette and just put a dab in there. You really don't need much at all. This oil is going to last you an eternity. Um, you don't have to use any fancy oils like the Abtai Long 502 range. You could just use some from your arts and crafts store. It really doesn't matter. Then you want to get some enamel thinners uh, or white spirits. I go with the odorless thinners. It just stops the horrible smell that um, can come with those uh, spirits. 
And then I'm being very generous here because we're going to try and make this into a wash. Now, in terms of the ratio, I can't exactly remember. Um, you're looking like a, f a five to one ratio, five parts um, a thinner and one part oil. Basically, just keep adding in the thinner until you get a really runny consistency, one of which you would look at and go, okay, that's going to make for a good wash. Now, the benefit of an oil wash is once we've applied it, and before I actually apply on the main body, I like to test out on a track. So you can see, I'm just testing out here. This way I can see, is it runny enough? If it's not runny enough, I can add a bit more thinner without um, potentially um, ruining any work, even though you can easily fix it up. So the benefit of this oil wash, as I was saying, is the fact that it also acts as a way of weathering the outer edges of the panel. So once you've applied this oil wash, and it's really easy to do, um, as you can see, it runs just like an enamel wash would or an acrylic wash, uh, uh, maybe not as runny as an acrylic wash, but an enamel wash for sure. And you can sort of just do a pin wash and guide it through. The reason I like to do pin washes is just because I don't like the mess. So this is a pin wash in terms of I'm just capturing each edge and I'm making sure it's not covered in this oil wash. As I said, the advantage of an oil wash is the fact that we can weather it later on. So once this is dried, opposed to an enamel wash where we come along and we try and remove all the excess, we can actually blend the excess into the panels, which will then make the outer edges look um, a lot better in terms of the weathering, as if some sort of uh, grime's pulled up, or if that panel's worn. So that's why we wanna really try and achieve that if we can. So this oil wash is fantastic for that. So if you do need to clean up anything, you can use your white spirits or your enamel odorless thinners, really is up to you, and you can go ahead and clean that up nicely. You wanna try and remove the majority of it if you can. And you can see here, I'm just starting to blend it all out. So I'm, I'm not trying to remove it, I'm just trying to blend the outer parts out. It's just gonna make the outer parts of each of those panels just that little bit darker. And it's just going to make those panels pop just a little bit more. So I'll speed this one up a little bit. I just want you to see if, if you can what I'm actually trying to describe because I'm terrible at describing things. But I'm really not trying to remove the wash as such. I'm trying just to blend it all in. And you can see that that top of that KV1 uh, sorry kv2 turret is really starting just to darken in places which is perfect this is what you really want to achieve and come like my brush is almost dry i've left this oil wash to sit for about half an hour to an hour before i come along and do this step as well and then yeah you can just with very little thinners on your brush you can just come along and just manipulate them around a little bit just to darken them up i like to make my russian tanks very dirty as you will see later on or as you would have seen in the intro um, so i'm going to try and keep this as cheap as possible so we're only going to really try and use oils to achieve majority of this um, other than the odd acrylic paint now i said to go back to your original paint when I first started this. So I said to get a spray can and then I said to find the exact same color in an acrylic pot form, if you're using acrylics. And the reason I want to do this is for chipping the actual decals. Now I've got a decal video on how I apply decals, which I know majority of you have probably already seen. But for those that haven't, you can check that out. Um, it shows a Flames of War vehicle that I'm using this decal applicator on, but the process works exactly the same for all decal applications. Um, so once I've got my acrylic paint that matches the spray can, I then start chipping away. And I'm just putting little lines here and there on the outer edges. Depends how worn you want it to look. Uh, I want it to go for a really worn veteran looking KV1 and 2. So I went with this. Now you don't have to go with Tamiya paint. You can find Vallejo spray cans and those spray cans will have an uh, associate paint that matches exactly the same. Same with most uh, spray cans. So if you can find the matching paint from the spray can, then you're laughing. And then this is what you're trying to achieve. So that's how I've chipped mine. It really is up to you how you want to do yours. Now we want to sort of try and make those panels pop. Now this is heavily weathered, as you can tell, but you can see that uh, they do pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to use is yellow and earth oils 
so a, a brown and a yellow and I'm gonna use my little trusty uh, pin here and I'm just gonna put in little tiny dots don't go heavy just little tiny dots all around the uh, panels try and aim for more of the center I know some of them on the outer edge but this is a big old panel you try and aim for like the center area of the panels and now you can see that I'm just starting to blend those uh, oils in and by doing this you're actually going to weather the panels so you can actually do like a form of modulation if you get the correct oils i didn't want to do that I, I wanted to really weather the panels as if they've just been sitting out in the sun for for years and gone through all the harsh weathers of, of russia as well as all the dust and everything else um so that's what i'm trying to do so you can see here that's how it's sort of cropped up and you can see it looks really nice it gets rid of just that same old looking green the two colors mixed together adds a really nice dynamic you don't have to put them all in the same order as well um, so you can really make different panels look brighter or darker however you want to do it and also don't forget to do your tracks you can make these as dirty as you want now we want to add some rain marks so i use dark mud and I use engine grease, so back to the same oil that we used for the wash. You can see this is like a black and like a dark brown. And I'm going back to my trusty pin. And now I'm adding in little tiny dots on the top of the surfaces that I want these streaks to run down. So these are streaks that are gonna be like grime, rust, rain that's dried on the side, whatever you want to do whatever you can think of now you can go as heavy and as light as you want here you might look at this and go i don't want any rain streaks that's fine don't bother with all of that just go to the next step uh, but i think adding streaks on really makes for a nice uh, tank especially when you think of russian tanks you think dirty but you think veterans tanks that don't care they just want to get in there and get the job done they don't care about camo they just want to really get the job done and that's the sort of look that i want to go with these i want them to look like dirty and, and veterany so that's what if that's even a word so that's what i'm trying to do here um so i'm going back to my odorless thinners or white spirits whatever you decide to use and i'm drying off the majority again and now i'm adding in a nice straight line down and i'm just pushing that down and straight away with very little effort at all you've got yourself some streaks now those streaks look very unrealistic i mean they're super dark having a super dark streak in isn't a bad thing but you don't want them all to be super dark the great thing about oils is they blend in so well so you just keep manipulating those streaks until you're happy with them add a little bit more thinners odorless thinners or an um white spirit sorry to your brush and you can tidy it up as much as you want. The great thing about oils is they're so easy to clean up. You can just come along with your uh, white spirits and a rag and wipe it all away and start again if you want to. As long as you've got that protection of the gloss go. So you can see it's very dirty at the moment. Doesn't look realistic. Looks quite amateurish. So I'm going to keep working it in. Keep blending those oils in and, and working it. Now I haven't sped this process up because I want you to sh I want to show you how easy it is um, and how little time is involved. I've sped it up now because it's just going to be here for 10 minutes. But th the process is so straightforward that you just put a bit of oil on and straight away you hit it. You don't have to let it dry. I mean you can do if you want to but there's really no need for it. Uh, I just find that as soon as I've applied the oil where I want it to go I can just come along with my brush and white spirits and just really start tidying it up. And then start blending it in until you're happy with it. And then once you're happy with it, you can go back through and add a few darker little streaks if you so wish. Especially areas where you know there will be like a, a little bit of a dark streak running down. So you can see it looks a little bit more realistic. I will go through and tidy that up later on. But for now, we want to move to the tracks. So I've painted them in dark grey from Vallejo. Now I want to use black wash from Vallejo. Any black wash will do fine. You could even paint the tracks black and avoid this step completely, but I like a wash track. Uh, I like to see the Lynx. Warlord Games have made a vehicle uh, with Lynx for a reason. So let's try and make those pop a little bit more than what you would usually do by just painting them black and dry brushing them. Now we wanna go with a really muddy slash rusty kind of looking track. And the best paint I've found for that is Burnt Umber. I use 
flat brown on smaller scale vehicles, but I think burnt umber works really great for these 20 millimeter, 28 millimeter tracks. Now, because it's a mud color, if you get some on the actual wheels, who cares? It makes the wheels look like they've got dried up old mud on them, which is probably not a bad thing. It makes them look nice and worn, um, and it's perfect. You can take it the next step further and you can get a smaller brush now and you can dry brush a bit of silver. So I use base lead belcher from Warhammer. You can use any silver really, it really doesn't matter. And then the final step for weathering, I like to use Tamiya Weathering Master set A and I go with mud and light sand just to add a bit of a dust effect to the wheels. Now, in terms of the oil wash and all the oils, you want to leave them a few days to dry. You don't want to um, rush those oils. They do take a long while to dry. I know there is uh, tutorials on YouTube on how to make the process a little bit quicker, but don't rush it, guys. If you're using oil washes, please do not rush it. Um, just give them a while to dry. You'll see that they, they do take a while to dry, which is a good thing if you need to go back through and fix up anything as well. Once I've weathered using the set A, I then go to set B and just really focus on the soot and potentially rust if there's anything that I've painted in a rusty color um, and just focus on like the barrels and any exhausts and stuff like that. We're not going to look at chipping and how I paint the MG and um, the light. That's going to come in part two. So part two is going to focus on a T34 um, and airbrushing. But today we're just focusing on how I just painted this ordinarily. And then once you've waited those few days, um, you need to get rid of that gloss effect. So we're going to hit it with a flat, clear spray. I use Tamiya. Uh, you can use an airbrush, but the whole purpose of this isn't to be using an airbrush. So you're going to be using a rattle can. And then the last step I like to do is paint on the tracks. You can use pigments to really make them look muddy or use uh, muddy uh, paints and stuff. Um, but or nature effects, but I'm just not going to bother in this video. So what did it cost? All up, it cost me quite a bit of money, but we've got to take into account we're using the Abtar Lung oils, MG thinners, Tamiya base paint, the spray cans, the Weathermaster sets, some of the Vallejo paints that you haven't seen, as well as the Warhammer paint. So it's cheaper than an airbrush. It cost me $153 Australian, so work that out wherever you're at. Um, but all of that stuff is gonna last you a long, long time. So you're gonna be able to get a lot of these tanks painted in very little time at all. And then this is what you're gonna try and get. Uh, this is gonna be your result, hopefully. And you can see it's a really worn tank, okay? And this is exactly what I wanted to go for. I think it's come out really nicely and that's only using a spray can and oils to really get that effect. And then there we go. We've got it spinning around nicely. I think it's really cool. I love the KV-1. I'm really glad Warlord sent me this actually because it's probably one of my favorite Russian tanks. I keep saying KV-1, I meant KV-2. You guys know what I mean. It's because I've got both. I love both of them, all right? I just love the ugliness of the KV-2. Please let me know below if you've enjoyed this video or if you found this video useful. Uh, if you're somebody that's not using an airbrush, I'd love to know if you found this useful as well. A huge thank you goes out to Warlord Games and the rest of the team for sending me these models as well as my patrons. It really does mean so much to me that you guys continue to support the channel. If you haven't checked out Actong Panzers, I would highly recommend having a look. It's going to be a fantastic 28mm tank warfare game and I can't wait to get my hands on the book and potentially have a game. So for Elliot, my friend in Perth, if you're ready for a game, let me know and we'll definitely put this KV1-2, I got it right this time, into action. Other than that guys, I'm going to leave it here and I will catch you at the next one.